Today we're gonna do a garden tour and we're probably gonna be harvesting a bunch of squash and some watermelons and some basil and some chamomile. The garden looks much different. I tore out a bunch of pumpkins and cucumbers and so directly several seeds in there in that area and some beans are coming up so let's go to the garden. Okay guys, so it's a little later than I wanted, but that's all right. <laughs> There's a dragonfly. Toby's sleeping right now. So of course our gorgeous zinnias are still going. And this other beautiful sunflower has blossomed. Look how gorgeous that is. Just gorgeous. So this area looks a little bit different. I completely lost the pumpkin plants. They just completely succumbed to squash bugs. From all that rain we had and we've been in a drought right now again for the last five days but it starts supposed to start raining again here in a couple hours and literally gonna rain again for seven full days so i am expecting this garden to kind of start succumbing to bacterial things again because i'm probably not going to be able to spray and then the cucumbers also succumb to squash bugs when i pulled all these out there was like 150 mature squash bugs with their little lot like nymphs all over the place and i was literally stepping on all of them with my feet um, but in here i put some lemon cucumbers heirloom lemon cucumbers i had and sewed them in there so hopefully those will come up and probably i'll protect them with some burlap to keep them not from being eaten by pests and in here i don't know if y'all saw in a previous video i got some char and tay i think that's how you say it heirloom melons from my neighbor and so I collected some of the seeds and I directly sowed some in here. So maybe we'll have some of those. So that will be super cool. I've got just tons of gorgeous zinnias going on here. And this cucumber plant, it's still kicking, but it is starting to peter out a little bit. It has several more cucumbers coming on it, but I think this is probably gonna be the last wave. A beautiful flower there for this cucumber before this one gets ripped out. Um, I haven't seen any squash bugs on it, but it does have, I think it's just on its way out. There are several really big cucumbers on here that I'm going to let, I'm going to leave them to mature and turn yellow because that's actually when you want to harvest the seeds out of them to save. This sunflower plant is just massive. This one, I think it's probably like 10 feet tall by now, but here's me, here's the sunflower. It's just tall. Really, really tall. Ooh. Here's a potato plant. I do not like that moth. That is not a good moth, guys. That is not something you want to see in your plants. But the potatoes are looking pretty good. Got a couple of them that popped up. And chives. So I'm actually going to go on and harvest some of these, I think. Just a few tops here. And yeah, with this one too, I think. Get some chives. Maybe they'll bush out a little bit. This one too. And these are perennial. These are garlic chives. So they smell really good. There's a little bit of garlic chives right there. Go on and put that in my grandfather's, my grandfather's basket. Been spraying some organic insecticidal soap just because I had, was dealing with, I don't know if y'all saw, a bunch of army worms and fruit worms in my tomatoes and um, they're eating holes for my tomatoes so I was battling with that but I think they finally got it under control 
So this is what I got going on with those tomatoes I was just talking about. I had a bunch of holes in the fruit and there was holes in the plants and there's just tons of these like black worms with like stripes all down them, all down these plants, all the way down. And I found one that was as big and fat as my finger that I killed. But I think it was just because all of the rain and I just couldn't keep up with it and they just kind of took over. But I think with this burlap, it's protecting them because what the moths do is they come out at dusk and they lay their larva on here and then the little worms you know they'll eat on the fruits and inside of them and the leaves and then they'll drop down when they get bigger and then they'll make like a cocoon down at the base barrel underneath the soil and then they'll hatch and then the process will start all over again so you can have several generations of army worms they can live in the soil for like three years so you just have to make sure you keep looking and picking at them and spraying and stuff like that but i think i finally got under control i put a scarecrow down there because i actually had birds i saw several yellow finches which are beautiful and mocking jays that were coming down and also picking at the tomatoes because they were trying to pick the army worms off the tomatoes and once they got a hold of the tomatoes they just couldn't stop themselves so i haven't covered these ones i've kind of left this as like a sacrificial lamb crop here and they haven't seemed to have too much trouble since I put the burlap on the other ones and have been spraying and have gotten rid of all of them. But you know, you see, there is some damage right there, like on that tomato, but it's not all the way through, but the birds were definitely pecking. But since I've got this burlap going and they're dusted with diatomaceous earth and the scarecrow, oh wow, that's sad. The whole body's gone. <laughs> that's quite interesting. I'm thinking Callie attacked it. Oh, Callie. I'll have to fix that. This is Cataluda Leopard Dog. She's a puppy. She's just the most craziest dog I've ever had to deal with before. But she's really good with the baby, so I will definitely have to pick that up. It's my husband's old shirt. And another good thing about this burlap and the shade cloth that I put on here, which I did have from my wedding, we used a bunch of this stuff for like the tables and like decor and stuff like that. Um, and the walkway and the chair covers, pretty much use it for everything, is that it also offers 50% shade. And tomatoes, we're in the middle of heat here in Tennessee in zone A. And it's so hot, we're reaching up in temperatures and you know, almost the hundreds. And tomatoes don't like anything pretty much beyond 80, 80 degrees Fahrenheit and so they'll drop their blossoms and stuff like that so this offers them some shade but still with like the light able to get through so I've noticed they haven't been dropping their blossoms as much and they still are setting fruit so that's super cool too I'll put a link down below for um kind of the burblick fabric that I use if you're interested in that so you can see we've got some fruit set on here hi buddy <laughs> apparently buddy's gonna join us in the garden tour but just tons of fruit setting on it really healthy fruit after that attack of the uh the tent worms or whatever you want to call them army worms you see some just really healthy fruit here um so i'm super happy about that i don't see any worms on it at the moment it's a really big one right there i hope to leave that one alone Uh oh we've got one pecked back there again can you all see that there's a hole right there so there's either a worm around here somewhere again, or I don't see how a bird could swoop that. It's probably a worm, so I have to scout out for that and see if I can kill it later. Oh, I don't see any at the moment, so I have to probably come back out here at dusk and scout all of these plants, including like the stems and stuff like that, because I've noticed like a lot of them, they like to kind of blend in inside of a crook of a stem or like inside of a leaf that might be curled up and see because they definitely there is definitely one or two army worms around here and i probably need to spray again but while we're down here i'm just gonna go ahead and harvest some basil you see they they've also been going at the basil leaves too hey buddy <laughs> yeah you helping harvest harvest some basil <laughs> i just need to plant some catnip for him i guess unless you're coming out here and taking chomps on the tomato plants hopefully not <laughs> some basil and just literally go down to the bunch and you just pluck it like that and it will promote that to bush out I'm gonna go and pick a bunch of that yeah buddy you like basil <laughs> you like basil buddy silly kitty <laughs> all right I think that's good for that side and 
I'm gonna go harvest some of the basil on the other side too. You coming, buddy? Okay, put that in here. The chives. It's not gonna be a massive amount of basil. I got a bunch of basil on the other side in the back porch. So you might have a lot of basil after this. Probably gonna have to dry some of it, or maybe I can make some pesto. I see some. Look at that caterpillar poop. So he's around here somewhere, and I did notice, uh-oh, we've got some holes right here, just so y'all know what to look out for if you're dealing with army worms. Um, it's either an army worm or a fruit worm. I've had, I've noticed I've had both. So if y'all see him, point him out to me so I can get rid of him. All right. Just pinch down here. Yeah, but do you see the army worm? Do you see the army worm? Okay. Some more basil. We can go on to the squash patch because I have tons of squash. Are you coming, buddy? To harvest over here that are ready. And you can see here, it just succumb to squash bugs. This is what happens when squash bugs attack. I killed a bunch of them yesterday, but oh, I think squash bugs eventually do win. Um, it happens, but this plant's still going, so I'm not going to take them out yet. I'm going to harvest the ones that are yellow. The way you can tell if a spaghetti squash is yellow is if they turn like really yellow like this. And if you in put your fingernail on it, it doesn't indent. That means it's ready. So I'm going to go harvest several of these squashes and then I'll show you how many I got and then there's a bunch of butternut over there as well and I'm literally just gonna like cut it as close to the vine as possible so it can store over winter or probably not over winter it's probably not gonna make it over winter probably gonna eat it before then <laughs> do you see that guys right there that is a squash bug nymph I just want to show you what it looks like so you can know what to look out for. They actually are known as stink bugs, probably what you know them as, but you don't want these guys in the garden. If you see them, pick them off and smash them. He's about to die in a second here. So it looks like that's probably all the spaghetti squashes right now that are ready to be harvested. They're this yellow color and they can't be indented. There are several more that are coming on their way. But I actually want to show you something about squash vine borers. This is what happens when you have squash vine borers. And this happens probably for every gardener towards the end of the season where these things just bore in the vines and it pretty much slowly kills your plants. And it's inevitable, it happens. I'm coming to the end of my season here. Um, these are all due, probably be pulled out by September anyway, the latest. And you can see I have several more fruit that are ripening on here. This one, I don't know if this one's gonna make it or not. This one's getting soft. This one might kind of go back. Actually, this one might be ready to harvest here. We're probably gonna harvest that one. But there's several more fruits you can see on here that are ripening. You see this one and we've got a huge one right here, the spaghetti squash. And I've got tons of butternut squash that are coming on. And this too has just completely succumbed to squash bugs and I probably a vine borers. You see that vine right there, it doesn't look very good. And I have noticed, I think that the spaghetti squash and the butternut has actually crossed. So I think this is actually a cross right here, um, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't mind this one too. Um, but yeah, so butternut is actually, they say, to plant butternut if you kind of want to not deal with squash bugs as much because they don't like butternut squash as much but i've honestly found that they like it just as much so these are ready so we're going to go harvest some of these it's the same with these they turn like a butternut tan color and they're really hard and you could also notice here which i noticed with the butternut is at kind of where the stem comes into the fruit it kind of turns like a dull tanny color when it's ready to be packed so we got several small ones on here to harvest because they weren't completely pollinated but toby and i ate several of them and they're still delicious they're just smaller so i'm going to go on ahead and harvest all those right now and i could harvest some rosemary actually because this looks like some of this is ready to harvest just pick it like that I probably need to transplant some of this over by 
those lemon cucumbers and over in the other part of the garden because I think that they would probably do justice in deterring bugs and pests away and stuff like that. Oh, it just smells so good, guys. You need to grow some fresh rosemary in your garden. So I'd say that's a pretty good amount. Definitely got, I'd probably say equivalent amounts, a bunch of small butternuts and several really good spaghetti squashes, but I'm pleased with that. I'm sure there's several more that will come on before the end of the season before I rip these guys out. But let's head on over to the watermelon patch. And I think there's one or two that are ready to be harvested over there. And hey buddy, he's still hanging out. Probably gonna leave one of them on there just so I can harvest it with Toby because he's been waiting so patiently to harvest these watermelons. These silver line melons are doing spectacular. Look at this, guys. Literally, just this growth in like a couple days period and there are several fruits setting on it. I can't wait to taste these guys. So here are their watermelons. They're actually doing much better since I think it was yesterday, the day before. I pruned out a lot of these parts of the watermelon that have succumbed to bacterial diseases. Oh, Callie, I'm going to move this. It's just crazy. Um, but yeah, you can see it's making new vines and I'm kind of just going to let it go that way. Kind of as like an insurance policy in case I lose this whole thing to the bacterial in case it like comes up. But I have noticed we've got some flowers setting. Um, I don't know what's been going on with it. A lot of the fruit has kind of looked like this. I don't know what that is. If y'all know what that is, shoot a comment down below this video. But this one definitely has gotten pollinated and that's getting larger. So that's good. The new growth definitely looks a lot healthier um, than the bottom growth. So hopefully I'll get some more fruits that will set off of this before it's ready to be turned out and put something else in here. So we'll see. And there's another silver line melon coming on. And this one's definitely slower to start, but these plants were smaller to begin with. So that's cool. So the way you tell, and these are a, a sugar bush baby. These are heirlooms. If these are ripe is if the tendril closest to the watermelon is dried up and shriveled, which this is. And this is like the head leaf is dried up and shriveled as well. And these has this has both of this. Now, if this was not on a trellis, this was on the ground, you'd probably have like a little yellow spot, you know, where it's setting, but this doesn't because it's on it's on a trellis. So this one is definitely ready to harvest. So I'm gonna go on and harvest this one right now. And you don't want to pull it, you want to get yourself a really good pair of pruners. I'm not sponsored and just cut it as close to the vine as possible. And I think the general rule of thumb is, is they're usually ready in about nine weeks from when they set their first fruit, when it sets their fruit. So this has definitely been well over nine weeks. I probably let it go a little bit longer. So maybe it will be sweeter. I don't know, or bitter. I don't know. But there's the first watermelon of the season. I'm so excited. I'm sure Toby will be too. So like this guy right here, I'll show you, he's actually not ready. And let me show you. His tendril closest to him looks like it's shriveled here, but this little leaf right here is not completely brown. So I'm actually gonna leave this one a little bit longer until this gets brown before I harvest this one. This one looks like it's ready to harvest. We've got a shriveled up tendril and the head leaf is brown and shriveled up. I'm going to wait and leave this one for Toby to harvest. Let's check on the last one by the dead scarecrow. <laughs> I need to get in here and re-mulch more. Watermelons do really good if they can retain their moisture. They do well with mulch, with a heavy mulch. Let's see with this guy. It's hard to tell because I've got them in bags. Um, The tendril is not completely shriveled up yet this is the closest one so we're gonna leave it for a little bit longer so we got one watermelon well two watermelons that are ready leaving one for toby pretty good so i'm gonna take you to look over at the zucchini squash and then we'll go over to the other basil patch and where the chamomile is and stuff like that Y'all are probably wondering what I'm doing with these pumpkins. I'm actually letting them cure because when I cut them off the vine, when this plant finally succumbed and it had to be completely totally ripped out, these were mostly green. They just had a little tint of this, this orange color. So if this ever happens to you, if you lose your plant, oh, you see those mocking jays. I just saw several of them over there. 
oh, little buggers, but you can cut them off the vine as close to the vine as possible. And you can leave them in the sun to cure for five to seven days. And as long as they have just a little tinge of orange, then you're safe with doing it that way. We've got a butterfly visitor on the red zinnia. We've got a red zinnia taker. I tell you, I see some some gorgeous butterflies out here with all these zinnias and these sunflowers, these cosmos, just so beautiful. So here we got the zucchini squash. As y'all can see, I'm burying tons of table scraps in here. I actually had Cali, the catahoula, come in here and dig up that dead chicken that I told you about that I buried here and ate it for herself. So I'm obviously not happy about that, but hey, what can you do? Um, but the zucchini is looking great. I did pick up se pick off several squash bugs off of these, um, you know, because they are in the same family, but it's got flowers coming on it. So that's super cool. So soon I'm thinking that these will probably set fruit. They're looking pretty good. I have picked off several squash bug eggs off of them. So it just that's part of, you know, doing that regularly, keeping the squash bugs at bay. It's just a constant battle, but it's something that you got to do. And I can't forget about the beautiful provider beans over here. They're doing great. We've got some thick little string bean setting. Slow, but it's coming along. And I directly sowed tons of beans in here, yellow wax and some green beans. And this popped up so far, the only one. So we'll see how that does, but that's super exciting. Oh my goodness, it's getting so hot out. I wish I could have done this earlier, but it's okay. Sometimes you get out later than you expected. But here we are over in the other basil patch where I had the kale and I tore it out. This is looking pretty good. It was kind of attacked by army worms, but it killed a bunch of other army worms over by this other tomato patch that I thought was completely dead, but it actually has new growth on it. So that's super cool. I'll show you guys that shortly here to pick a bunch of this basil. I'll have to dry all this. Definitely can't use all this basil because we've got a bunch to pick back on the back side of the house too where the chamomile is so the other day i said i was gonna get in here and i was gonna weed it because it kind of let the tomato patch get taken over by weeds you can see i weeded it a little bit and this was my dead tomato patch that has come back to life guys um i don't think it's gonna set fruit you can see there is a lot of new beautiful shoots off of like the dead growth so i finally figured out what was going on with this and this was actually hit with army worms too and at that time back in march and april i had no idea what they were oop look there's an army worm on now let me show you what they look like guys see here's an army worm here's an army worm i bet you that guy was over by my other tomato plants munching on it so when you see these guys kill them <laughs> They will literally munch holes. You see what it did here? And eat all of your leaves and put holes through all your tomato fruits and stuff like that. Um, so kill them, spray them, spray your plants with neem once or twice a week and dust them with diatomaceous earth. And hopefully that will keep it in check. But I don't think that these are probably going to put flowers off. Hopefully that's not hormone damage. Um, that kind of looks a little scary too but with these i actually had success i made several clippings off of these in the house and i'm actually cloning them in the house and they have roots on them so i'm thinking about cutting more of these and doing a video and showing you guys how to clone tomato plants so that should be fun and exciting add this to our other stuff we harvested and i still have to go back at the other part and harvest that basil and the chamomile. I'm gonna walk back there and talk. So like normally you don't want to be harvesting midday like I'm doing it because the crops and the fruits and the vegetables will taste much better and sweeter when you either pick early in the morning or late in the evening. But because I'm mostly picking just winter squash, it's okay. I really need to get them harvested before the wind comes. It's the wind, the wind and the rain comes. It's coming any minute now. It's gonna literally pour for a whole week straight. So I wanted to get those harvested before it came down. <sighs> Gotta get this freezer in the house. I've got so many peppers. I don't know what to do with. Guys, my neighbor let me pick all his banana peppers and I've got like five pounds or more of banana peppers. Here's the chamomile. 
it's looking better as you saw probably before i had a bunch of like these white bugs on it and like powdery mildew and i sprayed it a couple times and i kind of picked the spots off Ooh, look there's one right there still it's alive i don't know what these things are do y'all know what these things are he's dead but i got several flowers to harvest and the more you pick these you literally just pop the heads off <laughs> like <laughs> kind of like dandelions These make delicious tea. Got several more down here. I just want to pick them off individually because you don't want to um, damage the plant so it can make more flower heads. So you see right here, we've got another flower head coming and another flower head coming right here. Got a couple of chamomile leaves to add to my collection and basil here. And I need to, this is looking really good, but it's starting to turn a little yellow. And I think it's because it's in this pot and it's probably running out of nutrients. So I'm either gonna have to get it in a bigger pot or I'm gonna have to put it in the ground. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do yet with this. I'm just gonna go harvest all these kind of little florets off of it so it can bush out more and give them some water maybe later this evening. All right, just got a bunch of basil. Oh, I should have brought my basket. The more you harvest your basil, the more it will bunch out and it will make you more basil and you have it all season long and it won't go to seed. And here's a red raspberry. She's doing really good. Toby and I harvested several ripe berries off of there and that was delicious. And I have noticed that it is setting some more flowers. So we'll have a few more fruits on there. I really do need to get out here and prune this um, to promote some more bushing out and growth on this raspberry. All right, so that's, I think it for the harvest for this garden tour so before i go in it's so hot out guys um and i'm probably gonna make some lunch here soon i'll show you really quick how beautiful chevy's grave is looking with all the flowers on it <sighs> look at that guys isn't that beautiful one thing i wish i would have planted sooner was these gigantic cosmos this was like minimal effort on my part and directly sowed them in here and they're just beautiful. They're just taking over and they're massive and they put out tons of these beautiful yellow and orange blooms. They're just so gorgeous. Just some beautiful zinnias. They're all pink so far. And oh my gosh, guys, look! That is so pretty. Look at the wildflowers. They planted some wildflowers look at that i don't know what that is but it's absolutely gorgeous do you all know what that is and just some other beautiful wildflowers here just there were some pretty pink ones there the other day they're gone but look at those oh they're so pretty you hot callie i know me too you want to go inside let's go inside girl come on come on girl <laughs> you're being lazy you're chilling in the shade oh you tore about the tore apart the scarecrow miss callie i'm gonna have to fix that you crazy puppy you okay going inside now i'm gonna show you guys the massive amount of peppers that i have to figure out what to do with i don't know if y'all seen the craziness that's going on with this whole not being able to get a hold of you coming callie canning supplies but i was able to locate four hopefully they don't wake the baby up four cases of pint-sized canning things so i hope y'all aren't having trouble so look at all these peppers that i have to do something with and peppers, i should say but just tons of banana peppers i've got red ones that are fully mature and green ones that are not fully mature but that's usually how we eat them but this is a banana pepper fully mature and i got a couple bell peppers and i got one more of those charante melons they're absolutely delicious but i'm actually probably here i got a bunch of cucumbers that i uh, got off of my neighbor's plant they're fully mature so this is what a cucumber looks like when it's fully mature and this is when you want to get the seeds from it but i was thinking about doing a video on how to save seeds got several more squashes over here that i'm gonna add to that pile of squashes that we just harvested so thank y'all for joining me in my garden this afternoon 
you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, you could always leave them below in the comments. If you could help me with my questions, leave them below in the comments. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive my next video update. Till next time, y'all. Be blessed. Bye.